Uh, Robin in Howrah says, Leon, it's instructive that Mr Hitting describes it as a robust conversation between two adults. Is that how he normally interacts with other people when he's trying to persuade them to agree with him? Says Robin in Howrah this morning. Thank you for the text. And Viv's concerned about uh, the light rail issue. Uh, is uh, Reen Hitting about to kill off sensible rail solutions, like a possible rail link between Claremont and Hobart? 0438 922 936 on mornings. There's been a lot of talk recently about rail. In fact, tangentially, the Reen Hitting um, issue plays into it because what was being debated when Reen Hitting was allegedly bullying Ruth Forrest was legislation that would change the treatment of rail corridors in Tasmania. It's legislation that's in front of the LegCo at the moment and there are some that want the Legislative Council to get on with it and allow former rail lines, disused rail lines, to be used for other things. We had the Dorset Mayor on a couple of days ago and he desperately wants to get rail up, get cycleways in, um, get some of the opportunities that are around taken advantage of. Others are a little worried. If you haven't been to Hobart recently... Winding through the northern suburbs, the the rail line that up until very recently was a working rail line is still there and it's still pretty close to functional. If this legislation passes, though, what might it mean for the future of the light rail area that exists between Hobart and Bridgewater? For much of its length, there's a beautiful running track as well um, that's an incredible community asset. Um, what might it mean? Ben Johnston is president of the Northern Hobart, uh, nor, rather the Hobart Northern Suburbs Rail Action Group. Um, ben Johnston, good morning to you. Good morning, Leon. And thanks for talking with us. So why are you concerned about what this change to legislation, uh, the Strategic Infrastructure Corridors Bill, might mean for that rail line that exists between Hobart and Bridgewater at the moment? Well, that's a good question, Leon, and uh, one we're keen for an answer from the minister on. Uh, the legis- or the bill as it stands is. Uh, affects all uh, non-operational lines across the state, which includes the Hobart to Bridgewater line. So uh, given that it seems to encourage non-rail use of those uh, non-operational lines, we're we're very concerned about the future of the corridor. Um, Concerned why, Ben? Well, um, at the moment it has rails. It uh, had trains only a few years ago, and it's uh, it's still very ready to run trains again. Uh, So if... If for some reason there was a proposal put up to remove those rails and convert it to recreational use, this uh, this legislation facilitates that. Um, and recreational use, like um, cycleways, one, some, one of which already runs along part of the length of the rail line. Yeah, so Hobart to Claremont is a good example of uh, rail and uh, cycleway sharing the alignment, but uh, certainly beyond Claremont there's only enough room for a railway. And, uh, yeah, we'd hate to see that disappear because it's it's uh, strategic use for Hobart in the future, whether it's uh, tourists, freight or commuters. Um, what's the state of the rail like at the moment? I, I look at it and I hope that somebody's taking care of it because it's one of those things where, what is the saying, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. You know, an ounce of maintenance would be better than a pound of having to fix it up later if you let it go to ruin. Yeah, so at the moment, uh, Tasrail are doing vegetation management on the, near the, the track because it's still theirs, but uh, that's about it. And uh, ideally, the best way to uh, preserve and uh, keep the asset is to uh, to use it. So. Do you think there are designs to pull it up, Ben? Is anybody actually suggesting that it might be a better as an asset that is uh, pulled up? paved and provide, well, imagine an incredible running and cycle track that runs all the way to Bridgewater and uh, one day might run all the way out to New Norfolk. Uh, look, not that I'm aware of, and, you know, to be honest, this um, the, the line isn't under immediate threat, but uh, the, given that the, legis- or the bill in, in its current form doesn't specifically mention the uh, strategic importance of Hobart to Bridgewater, it, it lumps in even with all those other non-operational lines, which... Um, as I said, are being encouraged for, for non-rail other uses. Mm. Um, from time to time, there is greater or le- lesser levels of interest in an actual light rail service that would run out through the northern suburbs. Where's that up to at the moment, Ben? Well, certainly Hobart and Glenorchy councils are, are doing their work around the uh, land value opportunities around the stations, and uh, hopefully that will be released soon. Um, and... Uh, it's, it's not just a transport problem, although there, we do have a transport issue. It's, uh, it's mainly a catalyst for development in, uh, in areas that uh, desperately need it, such as through Glenorchy and all the way to Brighton. Uh, that's, that's how you make the business case. It's not based on fare box collections. It's, uh, it's the stimulus that you get for 
having those activity centres reactivated. Uh, indeed, I'd spend a bit of time out through that way and I think imagine what would happen to property prices uh, through, uh, through Moona and uh, in Glenorchy in the areas even roughly adjacent to that uh, that line if you got it uh, if you got it to uh, if you got that project up and running notwithstanding the fact that it would be an uh, incredibly expensive um, capital cost to actually make it happen Ben well it's all all has to be put in perspective though Leon we're spending 50 million dollars upgrading one intersection on the Brooker Highway so to spend uh, 100 million to get a brand new train between Hobart and Bridgewater shouldn't really be out of the realms of reason mm. yeah. yeah I suppose that that is an interesting way to look at it. I, I suppose I always turn it over in the other direction and go, $100 million, imagine how many buses that would provide you with, and those buses could run, you know, if we needed them, to Kingston, to, you know, you could deploy them in Burnie. You could run them anywhere much more flexibility than the sort of the static investment that is um, a, a single steel rail running out through the northern suburbs. What, what's your response to, to that concern? Well, I certainly have no issue with buses. Certainly um, a combined network of buses and rail is the only way it would work successfully. But, um, I mean, buses have their limitation. They're stuck in the same congestion as the traffic. And uh, from an efficiency perspective, they, uh, they, they use more fuel and uh, more, more resources to uh, move the same amount of people. So I think buses, ferries and trains have a, a place in Hobart if we could only get an integrated system going. Ben, good to talk to you this morning. Thanks so much, Leon. Cheers. Ben Johnston, President of the Northern Hobart Northern Suburbs Rail Action Group.